In this video, I will explain my floating wall system, what it does, and how it's designed for our basement, with an emphasis on the first step, installation of the base plates, which are made from pressure treated lumber. Here in Colorado, we have expansive soils, which cause concrete floors to move up and down over time. If a standard stud wall is framed in a basement between a concrete floor and the floor of the house above, the stud wall can place enough force on the floor above to cause real damage. So we construct floating walls, which consist of a normally framed wall suspended above a second base plate. This second base plate is made of treated lumber and is secured to the concrete floor. The rest of the framed wall is suspended from the floor above. We leave a gap between the two base plates to accommodate the anticipated potential rise in the height of the floor. Long nails or spikes are inserted through holes in the base plate of the frame wall and driven into the base plate secured to the floor. We use long enough spikes in the event the floor moves down. Here, I've drawn a cross section of one of my floating walls and on, including the floor joist above and the concrete floor below. The top plate is secured to the floor joist using construction screws, as the weight of the wall is actually hanging down from the floor above and merely floating above the concrete floor below. Next, I show the detail of how the bottom of the wall is constructed and how it works when the floor moves. I use quick bolts to attach the treated lumber base plates to my basement floor, simply because this is the method that I've used in the past, they use the tools I own, and I like them. I'll provide a link above and in the description to a video by the Essential Craftsman which covers a number of different methods to fasten wood to concrete. The frame walls are floating above the treated base plates and are held in place laterally by spikes, which in my case are 60 penny nails, which are six inches long. Notice, I do not have the spikes centered in this drawing because they would be hidden behind the drawing of my quick bolt. In practice, I install these in the center line of the base plates. I leave a half inch gap beneath the drywall to accommodate upward movement of the floor. The baseboards are attached to the treated base plates. They will move with the floor. In the event the soil under the concrete floor should expand, it may raise the floor over time. Likewise, if the soil was to compress or compact, the floor may drop. Potentially, the cycle could repeat. The expected time frame should be long, months or years. Here are some pictures of the base plates installed. So here's my thoughts on all of this. I know we have expansive soils and the floor can move either up or down. We replaced this floor almost 30 years ago and I have not been able to detect any appreciable movement. We install the perimeter drain and a sump pump and we keep the sump pumped down to about two feet below the floor. Therefore, I don't anticipate the floor moving very much, if at all. So, I left a one and a half inch gap between the two bottom plates, but I only left a half inch gap below the drywall. If the floor should ever rise a half inch, I may need to adjust. I use six inch spikes to allow for the soil to shrink and the floor to drop up to one and a half inches, but I do not expect this to ever happen. I will leave an eighth inch gap under the door jams and the door casement above the finished floor to provide a gauge to detect any movement in the floor. The door jams and the door casement are attached to the frame walls, which are stationary. I do not show this in my drawing, but picture the drywall with only an eighth inch gap. 
Again, I do not expect to ever see movement in the floor, but I would be remiss to not float the walls. There are no requirements to float basement walls in our jurisdiction, though it is recommended. There are jurisdictions here in Colorado that do require basement walls to be floated. In Arapahoe County, for example, basement walls must be floated three inches. An additional advantage to floating the walls, the base plates can follow the contour of the concrete, but you can still frame the walls plumb and square. Our floor is neither flat nor level. Unfortunately, I do not have any video of my actually installing the treated base plates, but the process is fairly straightforward. I use a compound miter saw to cut the 2x4 treated lumber to length. I attach the base plates to the floor using quick bolts. The ones I used are made by Hilti, but there are others. To install the quick bolts, I drill through the base plate and directly into the concrete using a hammer drill, controlling the depth of the hole to match the length of the anchors. I insert the anchor with the nut protecting the threads near the end, and then I set with a ball peen hammer. The last step is to tighten the nut with a socket wrench. When framing the walls, I drill through the base plate of the frame wall after the wall is placed using a 3 16 inch auger bit. I use 60 penny 6 inch spikes which I set with a framing hammer. I'll cover this in my future framing video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below and comment either way. If you find this video useful, consider subscribing to my channel to follow along with me on my basement project. If you do, you just might get to see me in the next video. Next up, framing.